Man of the Prize, the podcast. I'm Harvey. I'm your host, and I'm back. How's your day? How are you doing? Are you feeling good? Are you feeling what's what's the word? Happy, content, sad, maybe. However you're feeling, it's okay. How you deal with it's really the most important thing. So if you're struggling, you know, take a minute, sit down, contemplate, but feel however you need to feel and deal with it however you need to. You know, I'm all about men and opening and talking. That's what we do. And of course, I have another man on here with us. I I will just introduce him first and I'll tell you how I find him. His name is Michael Threets. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing really well. How about yourself? I am well. Thank you very much. If you watch or listen to my podcast, you know I have a bunch of kids. One of them loves TikTok. So because of that, I'm on TikTok. And now I can't even blame her anymore. Now I'm on it on my own. It's my own personal fault. And once in a while, really cool people, good content creators come up. And Michael came up. And like I was mentioning to him just before we started, he's a librarian. And I grew up loving reading and libraries when they were actually important. And sadly, they're not as important as they used to be, at least. We don't treat them the way they should be treated, but he has fantastic content about libraries and about books and about reading and about inclusion, all this stuff. He, I, I saw his first and I'm like, I got to watch the rest and just made me so happy seeing him, somebody who genuinely loves books and the space and the experience of being in a library. So I wanted to have him on here to talk. So again, thank you for coming on. And a quick bio. Michael is a supervising librarian for Solano County Library. He grew up in the Bay Area. He's committed to assuring all that they belong in this world. So my first question is, how did the library become such a special place for you? Where did that start? Um, it started as early as I could remember. I was a I was a homeschool kid, so I've been going to my public library, which is the library I work for, Solano County Library. Um, since I was five years old. Um, I'm now 33. So just being homeschooled, my mom relied upon the resources of the public library. She took me and my siblings there all the time. So five years old is when I got my first library card. Um, being homeschooled, that was just the world I gravitated towards. Um, just fell in love with books, read as many books as I could. Um, I always enjoyed sports. Um, so I read all the sports books. I read all the Matt Christopher all the basketball, football books I could find, the biographies on Michael Jordan, uh, Kobe Bryant, and then I just started falling in love um, with more and more genres. Um, and after that, I, I eventually found the library and just started working my way way up. So um, I've had a lifelong, lifelong love for the library, and it doesn't seem like it's going to stop anytime soon. Oh, that's good. And I hope you know it's not going to go away. So pretty soon, pretty quick after you started going, this was what you wanted to do with your life? You want it to be like a librarian or was it going to be an important part of your life? Um, I think I always knew it was going to be an important part of, my, part of my life, but I never I never considered it as a career um, when I was when I was a kid. Um, there wasn't there were no um, no black librarians when I was a kid. There were no um, there were no men who were librarians when I was a kid. So it wasn't really something that I saw myself doing. Um, I pursued different things um, in life. And I think I came back to my home to my hometown. Um, I think I was just sitting in the library just because it was a place where I was comfortable. And I think I just randomly asked um, the person at the desk, how you become, or how do you work for the library? Um, and then she let me know how you apply. And I applied as a library shelfer, um, got the job, um, realized it was a world that I liked. And I just kept um, kept applying until I got to my current position. So really, I stumbled into it. I never, it never was something that I thought would be my career. I always felt comfortable there. But no, it was never something I thought, oh. This is what it's going to be for me. So um, really just I, I, I got lucky um, and found found my passion in the library later in life. That's awesome. What you said is just something else that really stuck with me. Growing up, you mentioned how you would go to your library and there weren't male librarians and black librarians. Mm -hmm. For me, that's my that's my educational history. There weren't a lot of black, I think I had one black male teacher all mm -hmm. the way through high school from my elementary wow. all the way to graduate, one. And so one black, and it occurs to me that there are not, there are not a lot of black teachers, of yeah. educators. And it's so sad 
because we're necessary. We're so necessary. So when I see you and I see your content, you, you're not that teacher in the class, but you're that person that kids who spend more time on the internet than you in class, you're, you're making them comfortable. It's so good to see somebody in our community that our kids can look up to and say, you know what? It's cool. I guess a nerd. I don't know. If, I guess you can call yourself <laughs> one. And in years past, that wasn't the, maybe the coolest thing, but I think being a blurred is pretty awesome now. And and be and a nerd who reads, who makes it cool to be one. It's just what you are makes me so happy, which is why I'm so glad I had to talk to you. <laughs> so what I do with this podcast is like I mentioned, it's a space to be open for men to talk. That's what this is. And I take the words, I take the word prize, and I take the letters from the word prize, and we open it up. The first letter in the word prize is P. The word is purpose. Purpose is defined as reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. So what is your purpose in life? I would say I think I think it's a it's a very good connection of purpose to um to my passion another another p word, mm -hmm. um for a library is my purpose is just to show everybody that anything is possible for them that the library is a place where they all can belong they can all come be who they are um as you said you can you could be a nerd you could be a jock um you could be just you could become to be educated um I think that's the power of the library especially for men um it's a place where you can be vul be vulnerable. Um, I myself have gone through various um, anxiety and depression and moments of mental health, mental, uh, mental health, mental health issues in my life. And I've always felt comfortable at the library. Um, and that's, what, that's something I seek to do um, for, for everybody. Um, but I've seen it recently with young boys is just letting them be, letting them be okay, letting them be open to um, and seeing that their anxiety is real. It's not something that they should be ashamed of, that they can be open, that they can talk about it. Um, so my purpose as a librarian, as a black librarian, um, just as a person who loves educating people, showing them that they belong, is to give them that open space to um, come to the library and talk about their feelings, whether it be just getting a book, getting a musical instrument, getting a movie, whatever it is, they can just come say hi. Um, they, think, and they think that's also the beauty of the library, that it is the last free institution. There is no expectations when you come through the library doors. You don't have to read books. You don't have to be on the computer. Um, you can just walk through. You can sit. You can browse. Um, and you can just, it's a place where you can be yourself without judgment. So cool. That's so cool. Um, growing up, and obviously the library was an important part of your education. Did you have a person like you? at the library? Was there that person who you would see? Because you make, I, I imagine kids are just happy to see you. They're used to seeing you there. Was there somebody in the library that kind of gave you that feeling as you were growing up? Um, there was. I think my um, the children's librarian. She still works for the library where I work. Where I work for she um, or she works with the library system. So um, I remember her fondly as my as my children's librarian. I just look back fondly. Like she was always very nice, very kind. Um, very open and inviting, allowed us to ask as many questions as possible, um, showed us where everything that we needed was, um, let us come to the programs, let us do the story times, the homework help, um, the summer reading, bringing, bringing our pet cats to the pet parade. Um, she just basically just showed us the joy of um, being a kid um, and then growing up and still loving the library as a teen and as adults. So I would say that she was that person in the library for me. That's good. That's cool. Um, the next letter in the word prizes are the word is resilience. That's defined as the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties and toughness. You mentioned, you know, kind of your struggles with mental, with mental health. Has, and I feel like you kind of mentioned it. Is the has the library been a place aside from it kind of being your calling now? But me, maybe even as growing up, was the library a place of solace for you in terms of your mental health, in terms of maybe your anxiety, your struggles? Was that like a place to go to kind of feel better about things, to calm down? 
Oh, very much so. Yeah, I think it was it was a place where like I felt like I could be could be myself. It's where like, I see the word you chose was solace is perfect. It was a place where I could just go and kind of um not be normal but just exist. Um and kind of like get away from the um the anxiety that was kind of like locking me in um back at my parents' house and then currently now living alone. So the library has always been a place where I've been able to um just seek out because there are a lot of people. I mean the, the I work for a public library, so public library. Um, has a lot of people who just suffer from mental health who visit, um, but a lot of library workers just being um, introverted people also feel that too. So the library has definitely been a place where I've always felt um, comfortable um, surviving and persevering, persevering through my anxiety and depression and panic attacks. That's good. That's good. Is there a book like the book for you that started you on this? Obviously you went for education as a homeschool kid, but I mm -hmm. guess for reading that was maybe more on the, just for you, just for leisure. Is there a book that like put you on this path? Like I need to read a lot. Is there, do you have a personal favorite? Uh, well, my favorite book has always been as a kid was always, uh, was always where the wild things are. I have where the wild things are tattooed on my arm. Um, I think like the books that like just, catapult me to love where um, wayside school by lewis sacker i think i've always loved all the lewis sacker books um but holes by lewis sacker um that later got turned turn in the movie with shia labeouf um was always one of my favorite books it was it was one of the first books i remember being gifted um by my aunt and that's when i was like oh this is so cool um and that was one of the first ones where i remember just getting lost and like i didn't i didn't do anything else but finish that book so i would say holes is definitely that first book that um, catapulted, catapulted me into a lifelong love of reading. Okay, I'm. I think your love for books for me, it's like music and movies. I I love mm -hmm. them. How do you? This is completely off the subject, but I feel like you know I can talk <laughs> to you about this. How do you feel about books that become movies? What is your feeling about that? For example, Holes was made mm -hmm. into a film, and you had read it, and it's like one of your favorite books. So when you saw that movie. And I mean, I'm sure you're pretty young when you watched it, so you may not have been sure. thinking like this. Like, did they did they respect it? Did they do it right? How do you feel about those transitions? The attempt to take something so precious as a book and then put it on and put it on film and put it for everybody to see. It's. I think it's very it's very complicated. I think for for holes, I really liked holes. I think I didn't have any expectation of what it was going to be. I think I was young enough that I was just like, oh, that's so cool that one of my favorite books is going to become a movie. Um, but I think now being older and like seeing that there are so many books that are turned into movies, um, I think bookworms are always like a little bit conflicted. Like ah, they're never going to be able to do the book justice just because there's so many aspects of the book, so many details. There's usually at least a hundred pages and movies tend to be um, two to three hours uh, max and then TV series are 10 episodes. Um, and oftentimes uh, they wanna make more money off of the series. So they kind of either come away from the book um, or they add a little bit to it. Um, so I think just based on different ones, so it's a little bit bittersweet for me. Um, but I, I like I like that they base that they base things off of books because um, for the library, it always drives people back to the library. They'd be like, oh, maybe I'll read that read that book and see what it was all about. Maybe I, maybe they didn't include some crucial details. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. uh, I'm definitely one of those, one of those, uh, the book was, the book was better type of people. Um, but I like, I, I'm, I used to be obsessed. I love, I love TV shows. I'm a, I'm a person who has all the streaming platforms. So I love shows, shows and movies too, but definitely always, um, always going to be true to the books and <laughs> partial to them. I hear you. I'm, I'm like a bad movie TV show snob. I'm bad. And Stephen King is my favorite author. So okay. I so I love Christine and I obviously and I love Green Mile and all these. And I don't know if you've read any of his stuff, but a writer who's that descriptive and in such a genre, most of the time you can't do it right. Because sure. the way he talks about stuff, it so I'll watch. I, I I think I mentioned Christine. I, I read Christine. It's my favorite Stephen King. And I remember watching the movie and I'm like, they, they kind of covered it. But obviously, like you said, they got like two, two and a half <laughs> hours to get everything and they can't cover exactly. it. So I'm one of those people, like if a movie comes from a book and I want to see it, I won't watch it until I've read the book first. Gotcha. Because I, I like, I, I need that. I need to go into there. 
and because it's bad because I can't go in there like I'm just gonna enjoy the movie. I'm like, uh, that's not what happened in the book at all. She didn't look like that. That's not what she said. Yeah, I'm I'm ter- I'm terrible at that. I am. It's that's not how she would describe. Uh, yeah, not at all. And especially with the kind of some of the stuff I read, I kind of expect them to. But like you're right, they're trying to make money off of it, so it is what it is. Um, I skip the I in prize, and then I'll come back to it. The next letter in the word prize is Z. The word is zeal. Zeal is defined as enthusiastic devotion. Um, For me, for this podcast, I talk to a lot of men and I specifically ask them what you do for yourself that's not related to your work or to your family. Because as men, we have a tendency to, to take care of other people, to take care of spouses, family members, whomever. We have a list of people that we make sure we take care of. And a lot of times Mm -hmm. we're not on our own lists. So I make a point to ask, aside from work and family, what do you do for you when life is tough? What is your hobby? What is your what is your place to go, thing to do that is just for you to help you when life is kind of pushing you down? Um, that's, that's a really good question. I think lately it's been, um, which is always kind of like I've gone back and forth, is a little bit of um, fitness. Fitness and then hiking. I think fitness. I'm trying to get back into. I used to. I used to love running. It's been a few years, but um, I used to run. I used to run long ago. I used to run about five to six miles a day, um, just to just to zone out, just to get um, get into that. Um, and then I ran a marathon and that kind of stuff. Because like, oh, that was 26, 26 miles. That's a little bit too much. Um, but I think rec- recently, just going through different things, getting a new job, experiencing things, I think to get back on track with my mental health, um, it's, I've started pursuing more, more hiking, just going, I live in the Bay area. So, um, hiking around San Francisco, um, just being able to be in nature, um, has been really helpful. Um, and I've also just tried to, um, I've also kind of started dabbling in photography. Um, so just learning about that has just been a lot of fun, just trying to like take pictures, of the beauty of the world um, has been really cool for me. So I would say those are my outside of work and family. Um, those are my two two main hobbies. Um, and then as we kind of previously discussed, just um, I've always been big into TV TV shows. So I'm a okay. Netflix, Hulu, Apple TV, mm-hmm. um, HBO type of person. So uh, as much as we said, I'm, I'm a book book person. I love I can sit there for um, eleven straight hours binge watching binge watching a show. I just I was just, I uh, just start with just basically just finished watching a uh, sweet tooth on Netflix. Uh, okay. Um, so that's, is it good? That's all. Awesome. It's very good. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. Well, as a librarian, this, this, when you mentioned the hiking and kind of running and such, are you a fan of audiobooks? I am. I, I love audiobooks. So for, for running and running, I don't, I'm one of the people who has to have the, uh, the base, base of music. Um, listening to hip hop and rap and um, rock and alternative rock, but um, I do love I do love I do love audiobooks. I've actually I tend to read more read books through audiobooks more so than physical books um, lately, just because of um, time, just going back and forth. Um, and then at night, I tend to just kind of press play on my uh, on my phone and listen to the audiobooks through um, through Libby. So and just hearing another person narrate the story as well. So definitely, I definitely am a fan of audiobooks. You said Libby. That's is that an app that you use to read? Do you, it is. Okay. It's through the it's through the library. It's called oh, uh, Libby, okay. Libby by Overdrive. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Basically, free I, way to listen to audiobooks. That sounds good. I need to find that. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I like I like holding books though. I don't know. And I think yeah. I, I like you know flipping the pages. Sure. In my older days, I used to dog ear the pages. Now I know that is taboo. We don't disrespect <laughs> the pages like that but i like that i guess for me it's like oh look i've read this much i read this much mm-hmm. i've got this much left um i haven't done the audiobooks things yet but i think i may have to try because i think i'm going to do what you do and i'm going to i'm going to start walking that's a lot of five six miles sounds like we're ridiculous but i respect <laughs> you you're a good bag <laughs> you're for you <laughs> yeah. um the last letter in the word prize is e and that stands for expectation. Expectation is defined as a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. Mm-hmm. So when a kid comes into the library, maybe you've never seen him before, maybe it's his or her first time, and then they get to see you, 
what do you expect them to get from you from that first experience coming to the library and you meeting them and maybe helping them find a book or making them comfortable? What do, what do you want them to leave with? Um, I think for me, for me, a lot of it was try, what I'm trying to trying to do, um, especially in being a supervising librarian, where I previously for a few years worked in the marketing department, where I wasn't as often around around people every single day. I think a large part of what I wanted to do in returning back to the public view um, is, as we discussed earlier, is to show people that there are people of color, um, that there are men who work for the library. So I think that's first and foremost, like a big part of what I'm doing. Um, and it's also for me, it's also again, in that same sense to show people that anyone can be, can be, can be long at the library, can work for the library. Um, oftentimes you can see all me, all me covered in, covered in tattoos. So I like to show people that tattoos are not taboo in the work world um, at all. I mean, my, most of mine are nerdy. I have all the bookish, bookish tattoos, but I still have, you can, I still have an arm full of tattoos. Um, and then from there, I think I just want people to have an overall joy for the library. Um, I think I've always recognized that every book is not for everybody. Um, and I think just, just as you said, like the library is underappreciated. So I want to um, get them to embrace how much is possible at the library. That a lot of people come to work on their courses, on their classes, on the library computers, um, to print out plane tickets, to print out um um, book to print out uh, tickets to to movies to concerts. Um, libraries have books, of course, um, audio books that we discussed. But there's also graphic novels. Um, there's manga. There's movies. There is music and music apps. Um, there's musical instruments. People can learn to play the ukulele, the keyboard through the library. There's seed mini libraries. Um, there's board games, and I think the a big thing that always helps, like when the other kids come in, they're like, oh, I'm not too big into um into books is the parents aren't don't always like it but i like to tell kids and teens that there's also video video games mm -hmm. at the library so i think that's also was, was something that's very cool is that libraries have changed drastically even from when i was a kid um so i always i always seek to show everyone who comes in the library that there's something for everybody and they, that they all excuse me that they all can belong can be at the library can enjoy the library good that's good I um I live in Florida and I am in a state where to me in all honesty books are pretty much under attack. Yes, and libraries are under attack. As a librarian, as a lover of books and as an educator, how do you feel when you hear or see, you know, this 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 attempt to ban books out of libraries, out of schools. How do you feel about that when people are trying to withhold such amazing literature from kids, adults, from everyone? It honestly, it always makes me sad because I'm I'm in a very lucky place where we do have uh, my library system does not face many book bans, but there are that there are conversations about it. But I think what's sad is that the the attack, the war on books. Um, is this something that um, like kind of triggers every single library worker that we all support one another, that if you ban a book somewhere, all librarians are kind of going to be weaponized um, to help out, to join the war, to show everybody that there is freedom, that you do have the freedom to read, you have the right to read. Um, I think the saddest part is that, um, again, you said you live in Florida. In Florida, the problem is that they're not banning books because they read the books and dislike the content. Also, oftentimes, they just assume that um, books are trying to um, teach their children something when people when, when these books aren't even nonfiction they just happen to be black characters um, Asian characters characters who are LGBTQIA plus um, and there's nothing wrong with that and most of the time these stories are just having a character who happen to be that they're not trying to uh, they're not saying the the, the the books of black characters are not saying black people are best black people are trying to take over the world um, they're not trying to say that white people are bad. Um, they just happen to be, just as people are, we're all people, we're all existing. And that's what books are seeking to do. They're seeking to be, to um, to represent everybody. That's why my big thing is uh, representation matters in books um, and book bans um, completely attack that and combat re um, representation matters. Um, and I still wouldn't change it, but I just wish that the people who are banning these books would actually read, would actually read the books um, instead of getting scared by a quick synopsis and finding out that there's one character that they may not agree with, um, which is just plain silly. Um, so I think that's that's my thing, and that's why I try to 
um, impact so much joy and tell the stories of libraries and of all these diverse authors, these diverse characters, um, to show men, to show boys, to show everybody, whoever they are, should belong in books. That there is no that there is no means, there is no purposes that books should be banned from schools or libraries. Um, every you said you mentioned that you have um, children, um, parents should should be able to say, oh, maybe you shouldn't read this book yet. Maybe you're not quite ready. Um, but you shouldn't take that away from another person to decide, I am ready to read this book. Um, because books may not be for every single person, but they are for everybody. Everybody should be, have a chance to see themselves in books, in schools, on their shelves, their personal shelves, and in library shelves. Because that's just what books are. Books are, the, the books are there to be read, to be enjoyed, to be loved. So true. So true. Well, well said. Have you... Have you ever considered writing your own? Are you? Do you have a novel in that mind of yours that you're going to read? Are you going to? Has there ever been the dream to be able to go into a library and find your own, your your own book or a book of poetry or anything? Not necessarily poetry. I wish I wish I had the skills to write poetry, but I I have always wished I could write a book. It's just that, um, sitting there and writing and writing that. I think that's a hard part. Like I think I have a different different things in mind, but it's just a matter of trying to figure out what's that one thing that I can just delve myself into to write 100 to 200 pages. So hopefully one day I, it would be very cool um, to be an author, to see um, my own books in the library, to see people reading them, um, just have to figure out what's there. Um, I think just being a library kid, I've always had an imagination. So it's just a matter of um, securing that imagination long enough to get it onto the pages. So I feel like through the videos and stuff that I've watched, you're a fan of hip hop and you love mm -hmm. music. Like, can you think of a rapper who would be a good author and could write a good book? I I honestly feel I, I'm in I'm in the Bay Area, so I feel like uh, I feel like E40 um, would have been a good good one to write. Uh, I think he would have been very cool at writing um, kids books. It's very much like um, Dr. Seuss, kind of like made up made up words. For his for his books, and I feel like much of the rap hip hop lingo originated from E Forty in the Bay Area. So I feel like they could have made he he could have made a really fun um, fun book, um, and maybe he maybe he will someday. He, he may not be an illustrator, but there are illustrators who work with authors. So maybe E Forty will one day <laughs> sit out there and make a make a uh, make a kids book with somebody. <laughs> that's very that's very cool. Um, uh, because I know I know Pac. He had a book, mm -hmm. he has a book of poetry and sure. there's a lot of these the really talented rappers, wordsmiths, who I think given if they were to sit there at their laptop and try to put a story together, you know, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be rhythmic or anything, but I feel sure. like the imagination that a lot of these musicians have, I think they would be yes. really fun. Yes. So, yeah. So. I E40, I hear you. I haven't listened to as much E40. I'm an East Coast person. So, you know, I'm big E, sure. J, yep. and, you know, so all sure. these people, but the West Coast vibe is something I yeah. would, uh, I think that'd be an interesting story. I think the beats would be yeah. fun. We'll say that. Yeah. We'll say yeah. that. And like, and like you're saying, most most of them, just with their lyrics, they kind of are poets in their own right. Exactly. So essentially, they're all, they are a kind of right. They're all kind of authors in their own right. So I think Very a lot true. of them would be like the Kendrick Lamars. Um, That's who know, I that thought you were going to say. I thought you were going to go with Kendrick. Like that. <laughs> and he definitely <laughs> could. He's an incredibly intelligent, yes. one of the smartest rappers I think I've ever heard. And I think he would be great. And he needs to make yes. that happen. Yeah, um, him, but even, even a Nas, those kind of things. Even a Nas. Oh, Nas, maybe. Oh, incredibly intelligent, really good storyteller. I think he would be amazing too. Yeah. So he needs, yes. we hope he's listening. If you're listening, Nas, <laughs> drop that book on us. Come on, drop some poetry. E40 the same. We waiting mm -hmm. on it. We'll come to the store. Um, long time ago, one of the jobs I had is I used to work at uh, Barnes and Noble, and that was always it was a, you know bookstore, and I like books, and I, but I needed the job, so I worked in there, and it was so interesting. You don't know how many books are out there till you have to lead people to find them. With Barnes and Noble, like somebody looks for a book, oh, you know. And I saw one of your things and it's like somebody would come in. Oh, my God, I'm looking for this book. And it had this girl in it and she had a blue shirt on. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Like, what kind of book? <laughs> Was it a cookbook? Drama? Fiction? Not fiction? <laughs> it's 
<laughs> I need one more detail. <laughs> one, yeah, one more. Like author, anything. Was it characters? Do you know anything? I think that's probably one of the most fun times I had because obviously I kind of yeah. like libraries and I take sure. my kids. But working in the bookstore was very cool. It was <laughs> it was good to find different books. And I found graphic novels. I'm not mm -hmm. a big manga person, but a good graphic novel is really fun. Like I found Preacher and I love Preacher. It's one of my favorite wow. things. And I'm trying to get my kids there, but they're not there yet. They're still on TikTok. So they're not really reading as much. <laughs> so I got to work my way there. Um, let's go back to the word prize. The middle letter, the last letter for me is I. And I don't have a word for that because it typically represents the person that I'm talking to. Mm. So I'll just ask you, taking away kind of, I guess, the shackles, the titles, librarian, supervising librarian, friend, colleague, <laughs> runner, you know, anything. Who are you when you kind of take all that other stuff off of you at your core? I, you know, I'm my, at, at my core, I think I am, I, I am. I feel like I'm a I'm a cheer I'm a cheerleader of life. I love I love oh. seeing people succeed. I think that's why I think that's why I gravitate towards the library is um I've mentioned several times about the belonging of the library. Um the library is a fun place to be, but it's also can be difficult um just because everybody really does belong, which includes um there's a big um homeless, unhoused problem in in the world right now. And even those people, um, those people come to the library because they're welcome, as we're as we're saying. Um, but that can be conflicting just because, of course, they are, they're going through some things. So it can be hard for everybody else to exist. There is a little bit of fear. Um, so I say that just to say that I'm still, I'm rooting for them. I'm actively trying to help them, trying to help everybody. Um, but just even in my personal life, I love, I love seeing my family succeed, um, seeing my friends succeed. I'm always trying to hype, hype people up. I think that's why I like books. That's why I like diverse books opportunity to hype up the the Kelly Yangs, the Jerry, the Jerry Craft, Craft, the Angie Thomases, the Raina Telgemeyers. Um, just always, always cheering for people. Just that's why I love, that's why even though social media is controversial, I love, I love TikToks. I love all the wholesome TikToks about um, just with kids, just being silly, doing their things, um, the homecoming ones. I just love seeing I just love seeing people find their joy. I love I love listening to people's stories. I love finding out what makes people tick um so i think to my core is i'm just i just enjoy i try to take the joy out of life because there is a lot of difficulties um again i mentioned the mental health thing mental health is a big part of my life i'm always trying to tell people that the world is better with them that, that you do belong uh, mental health does matter it is a priority just like your physical health um so i'm always just trying to no matter how many days i have left i just want to cheer cheer people on um see them succeed um, and just hear what makes what makes them have fun, what makes them light up and smile. As we're recording this, it is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so I'm glad to hear you talk about that, specifically as Black men, talking about our anxiety, our issues, mm -hmm. our struggles. So there's so much wrapped up in that suicide awareness. We, we attempt suicide yeah. more than women do, by far. We have mm -hmm. these struggles and we're in this... There's this whole stigma of even talking about mental health and the fact that we yeah. need to remind people that it's okay. Yeah. It's something we need to do. You have anxiety, you have struggles. Can't hold that in. We kind of grown, yeah. you know, men were kind of raised to just, you know, rub some dirt on it, keep it moving yeah. as opposed to getting it out. Yes. So yeah. this is, yeah. so this is an important month. And there's so many outlets, there's so many things, there's so many people to talk to, so many books. People with mental health issues have written quite a bunch of great mm -hmm. things to read to kind of show you that you're not in this alone. So yes. I respect so much the fact that you're open and vulnerable about, you know, kind of what you've been through and to show that you're still here and that yeah. you're okay and that it's okay to not be okay sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> and, it's, and it's important that we do it. We're, our community is getting better at, accepting yes. and normalizing mental health discussion, but it's something that we still have to work on, still have to go. Day by day. Uh, day every, exactly. Every day, it's a little bit better. Every day. Um, I wanted to, one of the reasons that I really like what you do as we kind of wind it down here is you're, you occasionally you drop a story about a kid coming in, the experiences. Do you have a favorite time or favorite kid or favorite story with somebody coming in and the experience that some kids had maybe for the first time, or maybe not the first time, but that experience that kind of solidified their love for the library. Do you have one 
of yours? Um, there's there's so many. I think a favorite one. Of, I they're all they're all just so fun. I think kids naturally love love the library. So I think more so. I just enjoy. Um, I just enjoy hearing their funny stories. I think the chance for them to just kind of be unfiltered um, and tell me things is a reason for them to fall is to love the library more and um, and come to the library. I used to be um, one of my favorite stories. I used to be a children's librarian, um, so I would go I would go visit schools, tell them about the library, tell them about like how many cool things they would do with their library card. Um, and one year, I think we were going to be having an animal show. Um, for some reading and they tended to bring like a big animal for them to pet um, to touch um, and I had a feeling that that year it was going to be an alligator or a crocodile mm. that the people were going to bring um, and I told the, told the kids that and then one kid said just randomly after I said that he just goes I don't trust I don't trust your face um, and I was kind of taken aback but I was like oh okay um, I was like I promise you I'm I'm not going to be the one who's going to be holding the alligator mm. for you um, and he just looked so relieved um, to find out that I would not be the one holding the alligator at the oh, library wow. with them. Um, but um, that resonates, resonates to me just because he was just very honest. Um, he said that all the kids burst into laughter. Um, but then he and all, almost, almost all his classmates did end up coming back to the library to see that event. Um, so I think just for me, I think just that's what I take away from telling, telling people is allowing the kids to be open to say what they're thinking um, shows them that I'm being genuine, being authentic. And they're like, Oh, he didn't tell me, no, don't do that. He let me say what I had to say. Um, so I think that's why they, that's why they end up telling their parents all about the program. And they're like, we got to go see this. I guess he was telling the truth. There really is going to be an alligator. Um, it's going to be there. He's not going to be the one There's going to be, going to be a professional <laughs> holding the alligators so just those things I think I just love I just love allowing kids to be honest tell their stories um and just come in and enjoy it I always tell them like oh like usually I run out of time and I'm like oh I'm so sorry I know you all didn't get a chance to tell me your story you didn't all get a chance to tell me that you don't trust my face you can come back to the library another day with your grown-up and tell me whatever story you're thinking of oh my goodness kids so honest Honest to a fault. No Brutally filter. honest. Yes. Brutally honest. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. Um, Mike, thank you so much for talking with me. I really appreciate it. It was really good to have to talk about books and to talk about, to normalize it. It's comfortable. Librarians are the coolest people in the world. I don't, and they've gotten to that point. I don't know if that was always the case, but, you know, I, I think there's always been this specter of these, the older woman shushing everybody, the big, thick glasses and, you know, whatever. But being a librarian is somebody who I can see who looks just like me and makes that place even more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate the time you gave me. Where can people find you on social media, website, all yours? Tell us about it. Yeah. All, all of my social media, I'm I'm on way too many social media platforms, um, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. It's all under Michael3TS, um, M-Y-C-H-A-L, the number three, T-S. Um, can be found in all those places. Uh, I work for Solano County Library. You can visit solanolibrary.com to find out what um, all of my cool, all the cool things my library is trying to do. Um, all of their social media is under Solano Library. Um, and you'll just hear me talking even more about books and libraries and mental health um, and all the things that are important to me. Um, I'm always, basically, I just, I just enjoy telling people stories. That's the majority of my content. I just am an observer all day long at the library and I just retell much of what happens throughout my library life. Okay, awesome. Is the library, are they supportive of your social media, of what you do? They are. They are actually far too supportive in that um, <laughs> they, they are one of the bigger reasons that I got into TikTok. So <laughs> okay. probably would not have, I probably would not be putting out as much content if they weren't trying to push me to do more and accept it and um, just, yeah, just enjoy me telling the stories and telling our library stories. So yeah, they are remark remarkably supportive <laughs> of That's my good. social media endeavors. <laughs> That's good. Well, again, thank you. I appreciate it. I don't know, just the opportunity to talk to somebody who loves books, who has a passion for it and made my day. I'm probably taking the kids to the library after this. We need some books. I think it's, you know, it's a weekend. <laughs> well, let's correct you. We'll watch TV for a little while, but let's read something too. Um, so thank you for coming on. Thank you to the listeners and watchers of Man of the Prize, the podcast. 
don't forget, men, there's somebody who's waiting for you to show up today. Somebody who's waiting to hear from you. Somebody's day is brightened because you showed up. It might be tough today, may not be the best day, but you are good news for somebody. And never forget that. Never forget that you are a man and you are the prize. I'll see you next week.